Hello everyone and welcome to the crash course in energy presented by the Energy Club IIT Bombay. I am Maria and today's topic is petroleum and natural gas industry. So, let's begin. These are the topics that I intend to cover in today's module. As we all know that petroleum acts as one of the major energy sources in today's world and its extreme monetary value has led to it being known as the black gold. Basically, this industry is a combination of five major industries and they are exploration, extraction, refining, transportation and marketing. Oil and petroleum industry consists of three major sectors and these are upstream, midstream and the downstream. Upstream includes search for fields, drilling of exploration wells and drilling into established wells. Midstream includes transportation, storage and processing of oil and gas. Downstream includes filtration of raw materials, refining crude oil and purifying natural gas. So before we go to the advanced topics, we must cover up the basics. So as you all know that oil is stored in the porous shale rock. Many a time because of tectonic activity, this is forced to move upwards and when it meets some non-porous and hard rock, it gets trapped. Oil is trapped on the lower side with the natural gas above it. We will now see the extraction process. Conventionally, this is done by setting up large oil rigs. The process begins by drilling of a vertical bore directly to the oil pool. The speciality of this process is that it just uses gravity and natural pressure from the well to pump up the oil to the surface. Once the pressure falls below a certain value, steam and water are injected through a parallel bore to maintain pressure and help pump the oil. This process is known as water or gas injection. What we saw was the conventional method. It has its own advantages and disadvantages. The first thing is that it is a very simple and efficient process. It does not require modern technology. It is also relatively simple and land dis disruption is quite low. But this works only when the oil well is large enough. Also, there is always a risk of oil spills and leaks. All the things may seem fairly easy by now, but now it's time for a U-turn. Okay, so data says that oil reserves will last for only next 53 years. So what after then? Well, actually the given data is for conventional oil. Let me remind you that conventional oil is the oil that is extracted by conventional methods. So, coming back to the slide, if we could use unconventional oil efficiently, then the resources may last for next 400 years. So what actually is unconventional oil? This is just op opposite to the definition of conventional oil, that is, it is extracted by unconventional ways. Even though it is capable to satisfy our needs, there are many difficulties associated with this. It is much more difficult to extract, needs more complex machinery, is less profitable and has many technical problems. So these are the different types of unconventional oils. Oil sands. In simpler words, it is just to extract the oiliness of the sand. So you can imagine how difficult it is. Tight oil. This type of oil is similar to the conventional oil but is located a, a bit away and is present in a much smaller quantity. Shale oil is extracted directly from the shale stone. We now see the extraction of unconventional oil. The first method is hydraulic fracking. I will explain this with the help of the diagram. First. A vertical bore is drilled and on reaching close to the site, uh, it is drilled horizontally. Then it is cement casted, cement casted. Then the horizontal part is perforated with appropriate machinery. After that, a highly pressurized mixture of sand, water and other additives is, is pumped in. The small, uh, this causes cracks in the crust and then oil gets absorbed. Uh, the small pitcher depicts the role of pebbles in the fracking liquid mixture. Uh, its role is to keep the cracks open.
so this is directional drilling it is more efficient than the hydraulic drilling because in this we actually get to control the direction and steer the drill head this is the final comparison chart the smaller part depicts the conventional oil that are available in a lesser quantity and are relatively easy and economic to produce but will finish soon the broader base depicts the unconventional oil that is present in a much larger amount but is relatively very difficult to produce after extraction comes refining this video will explain this process very well refining begins with a process called distilling after oil is superheated it becomes vapor the vapor is fed into the distillation unit as it rises and cools the vapor turns back into a liquid using stacks of trays the liquid is easily collected and separated by weight the lighter and medium weight liquids require less processing before they're ready to be used in cars and trucks the heavier liquids need more processing to become useful A process called cracking is used to maximize the usefulness of heavy oil. Heavy oil has long strings of carbon and hydrogen molecules. Using a catalyst, these molecules can be broken into smaller chains, transforming the heavy oil into lighter, more valuable fluids. Reforming is a process that increases the amount of gasoline produced from crude oil. One of the products separated in the distilling process is a liquid called naphtha. The number of carbon atoms in naphtha is about the same as the number found in gasoline, but their structure is more complex. Reforming rearranges the naphtha molecule, turning it into a usable gasoline-like molecule. Blending is a process of mixing different refinery products to make finished petroleum fuels. Gasoline, for example, is blended to achieve octane standards, creating the grades of gasoline you see at the pump, regular, mid-grade, and premium, that are necessary to meet the needs of specific engine types. Treating is a process used to produce cleaner gasoline, which helps protect both the environment and our health. Gasoline molecules contain impurities like sulfur that can be removed. When the molecules are heated and come in contact with a special catalyst, a chemical reaction occurs that strips the sulfur away. These sulfur compounds are used as fertilizers and in pharmaceuticals, Nothing goes to waste in a refinery. As you all can see, these are the various industries that are directly dependent on petroleum industry. I think now you can guess the reason why we can't shut down the oil industry completely even though it causes a lot of pollution. Before starting the next major topic, I think we should uh, go through the slide once. This pie chart shows the percentage use of fossil fuels and its various components. So the major use of it as as fuel. We now come to the most interesting part of this module, and that is economics. So how and why does the oil prices fluctuate so much? The major reason for this to happen is the concept of demand and supply. That is quite straightforward. The more is the gap between supply and demand, the less is the cost. But this is not the only affecting factor. Let us see how. The price of the oil that we know is actually set in the oil futures market. An oil futures contract is a binding agreement that gives one the right to purchase oil by by barrel at a predefined price on a predefined date in the future. Under a futures contract, both the buyer and the seller are obliged to fulfill the side of transaction on the specific date. So basically it means that the future price of the oil is predecided. So if I am the seller and you are the buyer, I'll sell you this much amount of oil and you'll have to pay me a fixed cost per barrel and this will be the retail market cost. 
there are also legal contracts that make both the parties bound to it this will be a bit hard to accept but let us see how the sentiments are an important factor suppose in the oil futures market if people buying and selling contracts feel that the prices will rise in the future the sign up for higher prices and hence actually increasing the price so this is like a positive feedback loop hence market psychology can also be a main reason for sudden price hike or fall market forces are yet another major factor as you all know that the organization of petroleum Expo- exporting countries that is opec controls about 40% of the world supply of oil previously it controlled even higher margin Although the organization started doesn't explicitly state this but by restricting restricting production OPEC could force prices to rise or fall and thereby theoretically enjoy much greater profits Geography of production site is also an important factor that controls the prices of oil if the major amount of oil is produced from a place where the extraction is easy the prices will fall and vice versa natural disasters natural disasters lead to a sudden decrease in the demand and hence reducing the prices drastically 